The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Next time you visit your grocers, you'll find the Kraft folks have a grand surprise for you. It's new all-purpose Kraft oil and liquid shortening. Here's an oil for every cooking and salad use. Perfect for all your pan frying and deep frying. Perfect for any recipe that calls for liquid shortening. Perfect for every kind of homemade salad dressing. Remember, new Kraft oil at your grocers. Wonderful new Kraft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Bertie don't need a calendar to tell when the end of the month comes around Mr. Gilsey's house. No, indeed. Bertie can tell when he begins checking his income against his outgo and starts yelling. Bertie! Yes, I'm coming. Bertie, may I have a word with you? Yes, I got all the grocery bills right here in my hand. How'd you know what I wanted? Mr. Gilsey, I ain't been around this house all these years for nothing. I know when the moaning starts, it's about money, so here's the bill. Hey, well, where does the money go? Are we eating too much around here? Not me. I ain't gained a pound in years. Bertie still weighs a skimpy 182. <laughs> well, I didn't mean just you. Of course, I know other people who have gained a pound or two here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have to cut down someplace, Bertie. The amount of money I spend is ridiculous. I'm glad you said I. What? Because it ain't Bertie who spends the money. Bertie keeps her budget balanced. She serves a balanced meal on a balanced budget. You might call me balanced Bertie. (laughs) Yeah, I realize that, Bertie. Yes, sir. The money you ain't got didn't go for dinners at home. Well, I have done a certain amount of entertaining. (laughs) Nobody knows that better than you. (laughs) But if I was you, I wouldn't worry about it. Just charge it off to fun and frolic. Yeah, maybe I've been frolicking too much. Nobody knows that better than you. <laughs> well, I... I don't know. I have been dating girls a lot this month. Yes. Bertie, girls are expensive. Nobody knows that better than you. <laughs> I have a notion to cut down on my dates for a while. Yes, sir. Hi, everybody. Hello, Leroy. Hello, my boy. What's going on? We're talking about where the money goes. I don't care where it goes. Where can we get some? <laughs> Leroy, one way to get money is to save it. And your old uncle has made up his mind to save a little. Yeah? Mr. Gilsey, he's even talking about giving up girl. <laughs> no, no, I mean it. What's the matter with him, Bertie? He's cracking up. Oh. Which one are you going to give up first? Well, May Kelly's the most expensive. She always orders a big steak and a fancy dessert. Ain't she that travel agent? Yeah. Yeah, I can save a lot of money by avoiding the girls for a while. Well, you haven't seen Miss Tunnel in a long time, so you wouldn't miss her. As a matter of fact, I do miss Grace. I've just been sort of involved with Miss Olson. Um, may I ask you a question, Mr. Gilsley? Why, well, of course, Bertie. When you put the others on the shelf, what you gonna say when they see you out with Miss Tunnel? Well, I guess I should be fair to all of them and not go out with any of them. That's right, Unc. Be good to all the girls. Stay away from them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you can kid me, Leroy, but I'll do it. If I don't make dates for a while, it'll put money in my pocket. Unc, you're dreaming. That's what you think. You can no more stay away from girls than a horse can from hay. Can he, Bertie? Nobody knows that better than Mr. Gillsleeve. <laughs> By George, I'll show you. I think we can eat now, Thelma. Good, I'm simply famished. I just love cheese omelets. Oh, it's nothing as fancy as that Spanish rice you served at your place. Let's face it. There's nothing like having a man to take you out for dinner. Whatever happened to that meal ticket you had? Throckmorton? Mm, The water commissioner with the reservoir eyes. 
You know, Thelma, that's the strangest thing. Throckmorton hasn't phoned me in a month, a big lug. Well, I'm sure he hasn't given you up. Well, I've wondered. You want tea? I didn't make any. No, don't bother. If he had, he'd come back from his first picture. You know, that's an expensive frame. I bought the frame. Grace, don't you think his picture looks a little silly on the piano? No, I don't think so. But why did he have it taken wearing a hat and smoking a cigar? Well, it was a snapshot that turned out well, so he had it blown up. <laughs> he looks a little blown up himself. Like a squirrel with a mouthful of hickory nuts. Why, Thelma Scott is just a very cute double chin. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't let him get away. Unless you want Spanish rice with me again next week. Thelma, I can't throw myself at him. But why not? Women are voting now. If a woman can mark a ballot, why can't she mark her man? Suppose you expect me to go after him with a club and drag him up here by the hair. I think I'll make some tea. All right. Um, you can phone him and let him know you're still available. Oh, I can just see myself doing that. Hello, Throckmorton. This is Available Grace. Be subtle. Tell him he left his gloves here. But he didn't. Well, you'll still get him over here. And you might have a lot of fun looking for him. <laughs> you know, his nephew, Leroy, is a pupil of mine. Call up and threaten to flunk the kid. Throckmorton would swallow his cigar. Matter of fact, I've been planning to speak to him about Leroy's history grade when I see him. It wouldn't hurt to phone him. I'm right by the phone, Bertie. Just a minute, Leroy. Yeah? You remember, if it's any girl I know, tell her I'm busy. Are you really serious about giving up women? I'm a man of my word. Okay. Hello? Hello, uh, Leroy. This is Miss Tuttle. Oh, yes, Miss Tuttle. I guess you called to talk to Unc. Leroy. Well, is he there? He's here, but he says he's busy. Oh, I've uh, been wanting to talk to him about a school matter. School matter? Uh, but I haven't seen him recently. Well, you probably won't see him any time soon, Miss Tuttle. I won't? Don't take it personally, but Unc's decided he won't see any girls. Really? Whoop, young man. I, I, I guess I shouldn't say any more, Miss Tuttle. You've said enough. Goodbye, Leroy. Bye. Leroy, why did you tell her that? I didn't handle it quite right, huh? Oh, you didn't have to say I wouldn't see her. Grace will think I'm trying to avoid her. Sit down, Grace, sit down. Don't explode. Here, drink your tea. Ooh, if Throckmorton were here, I'd hit him right over the head with a tea bag, and I wouldn't take it out of the pot. <laughs> what did Leroy say? He said his uncle isn't seeing any girls. Not seeing girls? What's he seeing, spots in front of his eyes? <laughs> now, men can't get along without us. Well, they've been doing it. But I know Throckmorton. He isn't giving up girls. And I could prove it if I didn't have my pride. <laughs> I haven't any pride. How about letting me prove it? You don't even know him. Oh, that's why I'd make such a good decoy. Would you really try to date him, Thelma? Gracie, girl, I'm as anxious to be taken out to dinner as you are. <laughs> Right, George, I'm pretty proud of myself. I didn't take anybody out last night, so I've saved money already. <laughs> now I can afford to smoke a little better cigar. I think I'll see what Peavy has. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this morning? Do you have a better cigar than the ones I've been smoking? Mm, all of my cigars are better than the ones you've been smoking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I have some at two for a quarter, if you care to jump that high. Well, here's a quarter. Very yeah, well. Yeah, I can afford it after last night. What happened last night? You fall out of bed and find some money under the mattress? <laughs> no, no. Last night, I decided to give up women. How's that? Think of the money I'll save if I don't have dates for a while. <laughs> Personally, I'd rather spend my money on girls than on cigars. That is, if I didn't have Mrs. Peavy to spend it on. Yeah, just think back, Peavy. Think back at the money you frittered away courting. I didn't fritter it away when I courted Mrs. Peavy. We sat home in the parlor. Oh? Passed notes to each other on Sunday afternoon. Uh. <laughs> oh, Peavy. You must have taken her out once in a while. Why, I figured my gasoline bill alone is quite an item. 
Yeah, and I had a horse and buggy. <laughs> when we ran out of gas, we stopped by the side of the road and let him eat clover. <laughs> <laughs> he was a pretty smart horse, Mr. Gildersleeve. He was? Whenever I wanted to park for a spell, I'd jiggle the reins and he'd wink at me and run out of gas. <laughs> Phoebe, you were a sly one. That's what I say. <laughs> well, you didn't have the expenses a popular bachelor like me has. Dinners in restaurants, theaters, gifts. By the way, I just got in some fresh candy. Oh, no. No, I tell you, I'm saving my money. I'm not dating. You keep saying that as if you were trying to convince yourself. Well, I mean it. If I make a date within a month, I'll buy you a new hat. <laughs> Thanks for the new hat. <laughs> no fooling. It's amazing how you can put girls out of your mind. My, my. It never occurs to me to... Oh, excuse me, lady customer. Hey, no. <laughs> Something I can do for you, miss? Are you Mr. Peavy? Yes, ma'am. I phoned in an order this morning. I'm Thelma Scott. Oh, oh yes, Miss Scott. Yeah, Thelma Scott, huh? I have all your packages ready right here. Oh, I'm in no hurry if you're waiting on this gentleman. No, no, I've finished with Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, yes, indeed. Go right ahead, Miss Scott. Oh, thank you. So you're Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, indeed. <laughs> City Water Commissioner. <laughs> of course. I thought I'd seen your face, cigar and hat someplace before. You, well, I'm in the news quite a bit. Oh, I know. Uh, where's my bill, Mr. Peavy? Uh, it'll be uh, two thirty-five. In just a minute, till I can get in my purse. Uh, may I hold your packages? Oh, will you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Delighted. <laughs> Mr. Peavy, chivalry isn't dead. No, oh, my no. There you are. Thank you. Uh, will that be all? Well, I don't think I should try to carry any more. I, I don't know how I'll manage to get home with all these packages. Well, perhaps you can find some nice gentleman to give you a hand. Like you say, chivalry isn't dead. <laughs> I'll take the packages now, Mr. Gildersleeve. You will. Yeah. You, you got them? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I'm loaded with them. Now, if you'll be kind enough to open the door, I'll try to stagger home with them. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve has a car. Well, <laughs> which direction are you going, Miss Scott? Which direction are you going? Hmm? I mean, if, <laughs> if you're going my way, I'd appreciate a lift. <laughs> it looks like a lady in distress. <laughs> Let me have the packages, Miss Scott. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'm thrilled to have such a big, strong, handsome man carry my packages. <laughs> Now, let me run ahead and open the door for you. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Phoebe? My hat size is seven and three-eighths. <laughs> Phoebe, this isn't a date. You will know I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. You know why there's a bright new label on the Kraft Oil now featured at your grocers? The label is new because the oil inside is new. New Kraft Oil is both an all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. It's as perfect for deep frying as for homemade salad dressings. As ideally suited for pan frying as for all your baking recipes that call for liquid shortening. The good cooks in the Kraft kitchens urge you to try new Kraft all-purpose oil right away. They know you'll be delighted with everything it does. It's so truly all-purpose, you'll use it every day. When you use new Kraft oil in cakes, cookies, and quick breads, you pour your shortening from a bottle instead of scooping it out of a can. Measuring is exact and easy. And wait till you discover that tender, light crust new Kraft Oil gives to French fried foods. They're never soggy and hard to digest. You'll also appreciate the exclusive zip-out window in every Kraft Oil label. Pull off this little tab, and you see right into the bottle and know when your supply is running low. Next time you're shopping, be sure to get Kraft Oil. It's perfect for deep-frying and pan-frying, for baking and salad dressings. 
wonderful new craft, all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. Well, when Mr. Gillsleeve came home last night and said he's going to start saving money, he decided to do it the hard way, give up dating the girls. But I have to give him credit, he ain't had a date for 24 hours. I don't think. <laughs> Hello, Bertie. Evening, Mr. Gillsleeve. How's the battle going? What battle? I'm talking about your fight to save money. Oh, it's a breeze, Bertie. Yeah, I haven't thought about girls all day. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Hey, who was that girl I saw you with today? Me? <laughs> Leroy, your uncle ain't been out with no girl. Who's he kidding? I saw him with a girl in the car. They passed the school. Oh, her. <laughs> well, she had a lot of packages, so I took her home. How'd that happen? Well, it's easily explained. I know. She thought Mr. Gillsleeve was a bus. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, sir. She was waiting at the bus stop, and she thought Mr. Gillsleeve was a bus. Now, Bertie, she came into Peavy's. I've never seen her before. What a fast worker. It <laughs> Leroy, wait a minute She had all these packages And it was really Mr. Peavy Who suggested I take her home Oh, she's a friend of Mr. Peavy's No, he didn't know her either Oh, brother <laughs> What's so hard to understand about that? Mr. Gillsleeve If you have to explain this to anybody else Use my explanation What? Just say she thought you were a buzz oh. <laughs> Bunch of doubting Thomases. Here I am, Lily White, and they try to make something out of nothing. Well, I better straighten out Peavy, too. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Where's my new hat? <laughs> oh, I'm not buying you a new hat. I didn't have a date with Thelma. You calling her Thelma and it wasn't a date? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the type of girl you soon start calling by her first name. <laughs> you don't say. Well, I had to take her home, Peavy. You put me on such a spot. But it wasn't a date. Well, I can wait a day or two. I don't have to have the hat now. <laughs> no, sir, you won't get a hat out of me. I've made up my mind to avoid girls for a while, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Peavy, there's Grace Tuttle passing. No, I think she's coming in here. Zeke, I don't want to see her. Let me hide behind the counter. Very well. Then. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Miss Tuttle. I thought I saw Throckmorton come in here a moment ago. You don't say. Have you seen him recently? Oh, yes. Mr. Gildersleeve dropped in every day. Peavy tells her I'm here, I'll bite him on the leg. <laughs> Peavy, I've been uh, wondering about Throckmorton. Yeah, a lot of people wonder about him. <laughs> all of a sudden, he seems to be avoiding me. And now, with all due respect to Mrs. Peavy, I'd like to say that any man who avoids you has bats in the belfry. <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Peavy. Not only that, I think he should get a swift kick. And I might give it to him. <laughs> you better watch it. Uh, Mr. Peavy, I didn't know you smoked cigars. No, yeah, I don't. Uh, there's one on the counter still smoking. <laughs> I forgot my cigar. <laughs> yeah, it is a cigar, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know, some customer must have left it. Excuse me, I'll put it out under the counter. Here's your cigar, Mr. Gillersleeve. Oh, for... Uh, Mr. Peavy, <laughs> since you don't smoke, it seems strange that you keep an ashtray under the counter. Yeah, a lot of odds and ends accumulate under my counter. <laughs> Peavy, before I forget, I want some of these after-dinner mints. Yeah, very well. I'm having a dinner guest who prefers mints to cigars. I wonder who that is. Oh, and I just happened to think. Yes, ma'am? You might tell Throckmorton he left his tan suede gloves at my apartment. Very well. I don't have suede gloves. I guess they're his. At least none of the other boys has claimed them. Other boys? Well, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear about the gloves. Bye, Mr. Peavy. And goodbye, Miss Tuttle. Mr. Peavy? Yes? Are you sure you put out that cigar? I still smell smoke. Peavy, do you think she knew I was here? Well, if she didn't, she wouldn't notice an elephant in a pup tent. <laughs> Not 
much in the evening paper. Oh, why, George, this is a pretty girl on the society page. Honeymooning in Hawaii with J.T. Appleton III. Yeah, that'll cost him a lot of money. It isn't every bachelor who's as smart as I am. I wonder who left his gloves in Grace's apartment. Just because I'm not dating, she doesn't have to take advantage of the situation. Miss Kelly, please. Yes, Bertie? I didn't hear you come in. Yeah, reading the paper. I got a phone message for you. Oh? A pretty lady with a French accent wants you over for dinner tonight. Marie Olsen, huh? Yes, sir. But I declined for you. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Of course. She was mighty disappointed. She was going to have dinner on the patio in the moonlight. She was? Just you and her. She says she sure hated to sit there in the moonlight smelling that night-blooming jasmine all by herself. Bertie, you're just kidding me. If you ask me, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read any more of these short stories. I think I'll go upstairs and see what Leroy's doing. Yeah, I know I'll enjoy staying home without any dates. Just a matter of getting used to it. Leroy, what are you doing? I'm doing my homework. Come on in, Hunk. Oh, my goodness. You're doing your homework with your radio on? It helps me concentrate. <laughs> I'll come back when you aren't concentrating. I'll turn it off. Well, thank you, my boy. What do you want to do? Oh, I thought we might chat for a while. Sure, homework can wait. What will we talk about? Well, how's school, my boy? Okay. About the same, huh? Yeah, about the same. Quiet sitting around the house, isn't it? Want me to turn on the radio again? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wonder if I should go to bed. Unc, I hate to see you torture yourself. What's this? If it's just a matter of money, I'll give you my allowance. Here's 75 cents. Go have a date. Live it up. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, it doesn't bother me a bit not having a date. Oh, no. There are plenty of things to do without girls. Exciting things. Like what? Well, I think I'll go downstairs and clean out my desk. Yeah, things certainly do accumulate. Yeah, let's see what's in this drawer. Hey, I'm lucky. Jam so full, it'll take up a whole evening. In 1952 tax forms. Now, they can go. Here's some theater stubs. Two... What's this? Well, what do you know? That letter I got from Grace when she was at the teacher's convention in Kenosha. Oh, what a letter. I almost caught the train and went up there. She must have missed me from what she says here. Dearest Throckmorton. She called me dearest. I know I wrote you last night, but I'm so lonely I must write again this evening. As I look out over the lake, I feel very far away from you. Of course, being away has opened my eyes. Makes me appreciate more than ever how wonderful it is to be with you. <laughs> I can't hold out any longer. I better go buy PB his hat. PB, here's your new hat. How's that? I'm paying off. I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> no, no. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Make a date, did you? No, but I'm going to. Let me use your phone. Very yeah, well. I'm tired of sitting around home. Nothing to do evenings. Well, you can count the money you're saving. <laughs> well, I found out that isn't much fun, Petey. Well, I'm on the town tonight. <laughs> Which young lady are you calling? Yeah, I thought I'd call Grace. She wrote me such a nice letter. I didn't know she's out of town. She wrote me two years ago from Kenosha. No answer? I wonder if she's out with that fellow who owns the suede gloves. <laughs> Could be. Oh, well, I've got to have a date. I'll look up Thelma's number. What was her last name, Peavy? Uh, Thelma Scott, Poplar 223. Poplar... Peavy! <laughs> 
How do you know her number? Well, she ordered some more cosmetics and wanted me to phone her when they came in. Oh. Yeah, I know Thelma will go out with me. <laughs> she practically asked me for a date the day I drove her home. Hello? Hello, Thelma. No, this is Grace. Grace? <laughs> is that you, Throckmorton? Yeah, <laughs> Zeke. It isn't Zeke, it's Throckmorton. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, I tried to call you at home. <laughs> Oh, how'd you know I'm over here? Yeah, how'd I know you're over there? I, well, I'm talking to you, aren't I? <laughs> how about a date tonight? Thought you'd given up, girl. Grace, believe me, that's just an idle rumor. How about going out tonight? Sorry, I have a date. Oh, too bad. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. And you needn't call back because Thelma has a date also. Oh, poo. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, what is it, Peavy? If you can't get anybody else, I'll get my new hat and I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an evening. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. Some cooking and salad oils are good for one use and not so good for others. But New Craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening is perfect for everything. New Craft oil is so truly all-purpose, you'll use it every day. For pan frying and deep frying, for all recipes calling for liquid shortening, and of course, for homemade salad dressings. Tomorrow, be sure to get a bottle of wonderful New Craft all-purpose oil and liquid shortening. <laughs> Peavy do last night? Well, it was a pretty dull evening, Leroy. We argued for an hour about what we'd do, and then I took him and his new hat home. You really gave him a new hat? Well, of course. That was the understanding. I'd give him a new hat if I had a date. But you didn't have a date. I didn't. What? You only tried to get one. Say, that's right. Peavy has no right to that hat. I was a big stoop for ever taking it to him. Yeah. Why, you know, right, George, I'm going down and get that hat. <laughs> I can't just throw away ten dollars. Miss Gilsleeve, you had a phone call. Yo? Oh? Miss Tuttle said your gloves was at her apartment if you'd care to come by. Well, they aren't my gloves. But it's a good excuse to go over. I'm on my way. Unc, I thought you were going to get the hat back from Mr. Peavy. Leroy, I'm not an Indian giver. Let him keep the hat. What a character. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman and is an NBC Radio Network production. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Shipp, Julie Bennett, and Dick LeGrand. Musical composition by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. There are two kinds of delicious craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, smooth and delicately spiced, and craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. And whichever you prefer, remember, when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Try it on cold sandwiches, hamburgers, frankfurters, and cold cuts. Enjoy the wonderful sauces you can make for hot meat and vegetable courses with Kraft prepared mustard. Keep both kinds on hand and keep the whole family happy. Get mild Kraft mustard and Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added at your favorite food store. <laughs> Now, play You Bet Your Life with Groucho Marx on the NBC Radio Network.